Imagine a creature straight out of a myth, a creature of immense size, power, and majesty. This is the aurochs, the ancestor of modern cattle. They shaped the landscape and inspired awe. Sadly, these magnificent beasts are no longer with us. They are a ghost from the past, a reminder of nature's power and fragility. Scientists are working to bring back the aurochs. Through genetics and selective breeding, they aim to resurrect this ancient giant. Their efforts are about restoring balance to ecosystems. We embark on this exploration eager to learn more about the aurochs and their potential return. The aurochs are woven into human history and folklore. Ancient cave paintings depict these massive beasts. They were symbols of power, strength, and fear. From Greek mythology to medieval folklore, the aurochs appear as forest guardians and adversaries. In Roman times, they were displayed in gladiatorial arenas. Their legacy reminds us of our complex relationship with nature. To stand before an aurochs was to stand before a true titan of the animal kingdom. These were not merely large cattle, they were giants, dwarfing their modern descendants in both size and stature. Bulls with their imposing horns could reach a shoulder height of up to six feet, their massive frames easily tipping the scales at over 2,000 pounds. Cows, while slightly smaller, were still formidable creatures, their presence commanding respect in the primeval landscapes they inhabited. Their horns, long and curved, were not merely for show. They were formidable weapons, used to defend themselves and their young from predators. These horns, often exceeding three feet in length, were a testament to the aurochs power and served as a visual reminder of their dominance in the ecosystem. The aurochs coat, a deep rich brown in bulls and a reddish brown in cows, provided camouflage in their forested environments. But the aurochs' physical presence was more than just brute strength. Their bodies were built for endurance, capable of traversing vast distances in search of food and suitable grazing grounds. Their legs, long and powerful, were designed for both speed and agility, allowing them to navigate the diverse terrain they called home. The aurochs were a symphony of power and grace, a testament to nature's ability to craft creatures of immense size and surprising agility. The aurochs were not confined to a single corner of the globe. Their range was vast, spanning across continents and encompassing a wide array of habitats. From the lush forests of Europe to the open woodlands of Asia, the aurochs thrived in a variety of environments. Their adaptability was key to their success, allowing them to flourish in different climates and terrains. In Europe, their territory stretched from the Iberian Peninsula in the west to the Ural Mountains in the east. They roamed freely through what are now modern-day France, Germany, Poland, and beyond. Southward, their range extended into the Balkan Peninsula and even into parts of North Africa. Their presence shaped the landscapes they inhabited, their grazing habits influencing the growth of forests and grasslands. Their adaptability was evident in their ability to thrive in both warm and cold climates. They were as comfortable in the temperate forests of Central Europe as they were in the colder regions of Scandinavia and Eastern Europe. This versatility allowed them to spread far and wide, establishing themselves as a keystone species in a variety of ecosystems. The aurochs were not confined by geographical boundaries. They were creatures of movement, their lives intertwined with the rhythms of the seasons. They migrated across vast distances, following the availability of food and seeking suitable breeding grounds. Their presence, though temporary in any one location, left an enduring mark on the landscapes they traversed, shaping the flora and fauna of their domain. The aurochs were not picky eaters. They were both browsers and grazers, their diet consisting of a diverse array of plants. Their large size meant they needed a substantial amount of food to fuel their bodies. They roamed far and wide, their grazing habits playing a crucial role in shaping the landscapes they inhabited. During the spring and summer months, they feasted on grasses, herbs, and the tender shoots of trees. Their powerful jaws and teeth could grind through tough vegetation, 
allowing them to extract maximum nutrition from their food. Their grazing helped to keep grasslands open, preventing the encroachment of forests and maintaining a balance between different plant communities. As autumn approached, their diet shifted to include fruits, nuts, and fallen leaves. They used their massive horns to strip bark from trees, supplementing their diet with the nutrients found beneath. This browsing behavior, while seemingly destructive, actually played a role in forest regeneration. By creating gaps in the canopy, they allowed sunlight to reach the forest floor, promoting the growth of new vegetation. The aurochs' impact on their environment extended beyond their immediate feeding habits. Their dung, rich in nutrients, fertilized the soil, promoting the growth of plants and supporting a diverse array of insects and other creatures. Their presence, both as grazers and browsers, helped to create a mosaic of habitats, supporting a greater diversity of life. They were, in essence, ecosystem engineers, shaping their surroundings and influencing the distribution and abundance of other species. The aurochs, despite their imposing size, were not solitary creatures. They lived in herds, often led by a dominant bull. This bull protected the herd and ensured its survival. Within the herd, a complex social structure existed. Challenges to the dominant bull were common. Cows raised and protected the calves. Understanding their behavior helps inform future reintroduction efforts. The aurochs for millennia thrived in a world where humans were but one species among many. Yet as human populations grew and expanded, the dynamics between humans and these magnificent creatures began to shift. The very traits that had once ensured the aurochs' survival, their size, their strength, their role as a source of food, would ironically contribute to their eventual downfall. Early humans with their primitive tools and hunting techniques posed little threat to the aurochs. In fact, evidence suggests a degree of coexistence with early humans incorporating aurochs into their cave paintings and rituals. However, as human hunting skills advanced, the aurochs increasingly found themselves in the crosshairs. Their immense size made them a valuable target, their meat providing sustenance for entire communities. The development of agriculture further encroached upon the aurochs' domain. Forests, once vast and untamed, were cleared to make way for fields and pastures. As human settlements expanded, the aurochs' habitat shrank, fragmenting their populations and isolating them from one another. The once ubiquitous giants of the forests were slowly being pushed to the margins of their former range. The relationship between humans and the aurochs, once characterized by a degree of balance, was becoming increasingly one-sided. The aurochs, despite their strength, were ill-equipped to withstand the relentless pressure of human expansion and exploitation. Their slow reproductive rate, with cows typically giving birth to a single calf every two to three years, made it difficult for them to replenish their numbers in the face of sustained hunting and habitat loss. Section 2. Shrinking Territories, Habitat Loss, and Fragmentation As the human footprint spread across Europe and Asia, the aurochs' once vast territory began to shrink at an alarming rate. Forests were felled to fuel the fires of burgeoning human populations and to provide timber for construction. Open grasslands, once teeming with grazing herds, were transformed into fields of crops, further limiting the aurochs' access to essential grazing grounds. This loss of habitat had a devastating impact on the aurochs' population. Unable to roam freely across their former range, they were forced into smaller and smaller pockets of suitable terrain. These isolated populations, cut off from one another, became increasingly vulnerable to inbreeding, reducing genetic diversity and making them more susceptible to disease and environmental changes. The fragmentation of their habitat also brought the aurochs into closer contact with domesticated livestock, increasing the risk of disease transmission. Diseases that posed little threat to domesticated cattle, which benefited from human care, could devastate aurochs' populations, which lacked the same immunity. The combination of habitat loss, fragmentation and disease created a perfect storm, pushing the aurochs closer to the brink. 
This steady erosion of their habitat was not merely a consequence of human need. It was also driven by a shift in human perception. The aurochs, once revered as symbols of wildness and power, were increasingly viewed as competitors for resources, as threats to livestock, and as obstacles to human progress. This changing attitude, coupled with the increasing rarity of the aurochs, made their protection a low priority for societies focused on expansion and development. Section 3. Competition and Disease – Challenges to Survival The shrinking forests and grasslands not only deprived the aurochs of their habitat, but also brought them into direct competition with domesticated livestock. Cattle, sheep and goats, introduced by humans, grazed on the same grasses and herbs, putting further pressure on the already strained food supply. This competition for resources was particularly detrimental to the aurochs during harsh winters or periods of drought. With limited food available, the aurochs, already weakened by habitat loss and fragmentation, often lost out to their domesticated counterparts. Their larger size, which had once been an advantage, now worked against them, requiring them to consume even greater quantities of food to sustain their massive frames. The proximity to domesticated animals also introduced a new threat disease. Diseases such as rinderpest and foot and mouth disease, while relatively harmless to domesticated cattle, which had developed some resistance, could prove fatal to the aurochs. Their immune systems, not accustomed to these novel pathogens, were ill-equipped to fight back, leading to rapid die-offs within affected populations. The combined pressures of habitat loss, competition and disease took a heavy toll on the aurochs. Their numbers dwindled, and their once mighty herds were reduced to scattered remnants of their former glory. The giants of the forest, which had for so long shaped the landscapes they inhabited, were now fighting a losing battle for survival. The shadow of extinction loomed large, a testament to the devastating impact of human actions on even the most powerful of creatures. Section 4 The Last Stand The Final Days of the Aurochs the last aurochs died in 1627, marking the extinction of a species that once roamed across Europe. Breeding back the giants. The concept of backbreeding. By selecting traits from domesticated cattle, breeders aim to recreate the aurochs. The Heck Brothers Quest Early Attempts, and the Heck Cattle. The Heck Brothers breeding program in the 1920s produced Heck Cattle, resembling the Aurochs. Beyond the Heck refinement through breeding programs, modern programs like the Tauros program and Uru's project aim to create Aurochs-like animals. Section 4. The Role of Genetics Unlocking the Aurochs DNA Advanced genetic techniques and CRISPR technology offer new tools for Aurochs revival. Section 5. Challenges and Ethical Considerations Bringing Back the Aurochs The quest to revive the Aurochs raises ethical and ecological concerns. Section 1. Rewilding Europe, the aurochs' potential role. Reintroducing aurochs could restore ecological processes and biodiversity. The aurochs' return to European landscapes could have a cascading effect on biodiversity. Their grazing habits create diverse habitats benefiting various species. Section 3. Coexistence challenges aurochs and modern landscapes. Integrating aurochs into modern landscapes requires careful planning and management. Section 
Section 4, A Future with Giants, Balancing Act of Conservation. The potential return of the aurochs to European landscapes represents a pivotal moment in conservation, a test of our ability to restore what has been lost and to forge a new relationship with the wild. It is a bold experiment, fraught with challenges but also brimming with hope. Success hinges not only on scientific advancements in backbreeding and ecological restoration, but also on our willingness to embrace a wilder, more biodiverse future. The aurochs, with its imposing presence, serves as a powerful symbol of this vision. Their reintroduction is not merely about bringing back a single species, it is about restoring a lost connection to our natural heritage, about rewilding our landscapes and ourselves. It is about recognizing the intrinsic value of wildness and the ecological services that intact ecosystems provide. The challenges are undeniable. Finding suitable habitats, managing potential conflicts with human activities, and ensuring the long-term viability of aurochs populations will require ongoing commitment, collaboration, and adaptive management. Yet, the potential rewards are equally compelling. A more biodiverse, resilient, and awe-inspiring Europe, where humans and wild creatures coexist in a carefully choreographed dance of life. The quest to bring back the aurochs is ultimately a journey of rediscovering our place in the web of life. It is about recognizing that we are not separate from nature, but rather an integral part of it. It is about embracing the wildness within us and around us, and about working together to create a future where both humans and nature can thrive. Section 1. The Auroch's Legacy, A Call to Action The Auroch's story is a call to action, urging us to re-examine our relationship with nature. Their extinction highlights our impact on ecological balances. Efforts to bring them back symbolize hope and our responsibility to restore nature. The Auroch's legacy challenges us to respect and protect our planet. Section 2. A Wilder Tomorrow, Coexisting with Giants Imagine a Europe where aurochs roam ancient forests and grasslands again. These creatures, as ecological engineers, shape landscapes and foster biodiversity. This vision is now possible thanks to scientists, conservationists and citizens yearning for a wilder world. Reintroducing aurochs presents challenges and opportunities. It requires planning, management and adapting to their presence in modern landscapes. Collaboration between scientists, policymakers, landowners, and communities is essential. The rewards are immeasurable. The Auroch's return could herald a new era of conservation, restoring ecological functionality on a grand scale. It could inspire a generation to reconnect with nature, marvel at these giants, and preserve biodiversity. The Auroch's story is still being written, inviting us to shape a future where humans and nature thrive. Hope endures and the power to restore balance is within our grasp. The choice is ours, to heed the aurochs' call or let their legacy fade into extinction. The future of wilderness depends on our decisions today. 